responding to Redeem Zoomer's video why he's not Eastern Orthodox. For those who haven't heard of him, he has had some super viral videos lately. I mean, he has a really nice voice. He seems like a charitable, nice guy. But regarding his arguments against Orthodoxy, they're not Wrong. good at all. In his video, and his entire channel shows the flaws of the Protestant mindset. And as we're going to see in his video, he only relies on rhetoric. He hasn't done the research on Eastern Orthodoxy, and it shows. Because he doesn't bring up any biblical or patristic evidence to support his positions, he in fact relies on a straw man of Orthodoxy. He basically says Orthodoxy is just tradition alone. We have basically turned tradition into an idol. That Orthodoxy is too traditional. That's what he says. But the worst part is that he says that the main reason that he's not Eastern Orthodox is because West, the West, Western civilization has had a greater impact on society and had more inventions and it's had the Protestant work ethic. And you can look at the historically Protestant nations like the Netherlands and Scandinavia and Germany and they bettered civilization the most. So it must be true. That's literally what he says in the video. Well, we can see where this led. I mean, he's a Presbyterian. That's That was from the Scottish Reformation. Scotland is one of the most atheist places now. The Netherlands, they are leaving Christianity. We can see the fruits of Reformed theology. Are we going to say that atheism is true? That Islam is true because they have richer societies? No, that's not the point of Christianity. Have you read the story of Job? He should know this. He knows this. But what he is preaching is a prosperity gospel. Basically, he's saying that the Protestant nations were the best off. So that's why he's not Eastern Orthodox, because they, they they had uh, hardships. You know, they were suffering under Muslims and communists. And even throughout the persecution of Orthodox, the church never went away. The teachings never changed. We never destroyed our liturgy. We never had modernist heretic saints. We always made amazing saints. That's what the church is in the business of, the salvation of souls. That's one big problem with the American Protestant mindset. Another one, if you've seen his videos, you would know he's a member of the Presbyterian Church of the USA. And he's fully aware that it's liberal. But his ethos is to retake the mainline Protestants. He even wrote his own 95 thesis because the church needs to be fixed. It needs to be restored. Do you see the problem? This is a problem that plagues Protestantism, endless schism, and endless reformation. So in order to make my response, I want to understand his position, what his church teaches, but since he knows his church teaches error, I had to look at his channel and find a video, what is the true church? Now we're going to watch this. I'm getting to the response, but I want to understand his position. Now he's going to be playing Minecraft. Let's see what he's saying. What makes a church a true church? And why do some so-called churches not qualify? You need to believe that Jesus is um, true. You need to believe who God is, and you need to believe the general Christian message. So he starts listing off. You need to believe this, 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 this. Okay, why is anyone bound to what he says? He, he agrees. No one's bound to what he says. There is no authority. It's up to each individual Protestant to define what it means to be a Christian. I believe this. Well, I've done my research, and you only need to believe this, this, this. Well, we disagree on that. Well, let's go to the Bible. Okay, we did have different interpretations. I mean, some Protestants will refer to a tradition, but you have no final authority. There is no, there is no one. You can have your list... They have that list, and that's how you get thousands of different Protestant denominations. And notice another thing, it's purely intellectual of what the church is. Oh, you need to believe this, you need to know this. Okay, but in Orthodoxy, it doesn't matter if you're a fast boy, if you're a slow boy. What matters is that you are a member of the church and that you have a truly repentant heart. Because the Bible says the Holy Spirit will guide the church in all truth. So what these non-Christian cults always do is they claim that true Christianity was lost for like 1500 years and they're the ones that recover. No, that is not what the Bible says will happen in the church. It's my line. This is exactly what makes every Protestant sect so heretical because we believe that the church is guided by the Holy Spirit. But if you're a Protestant, then you have to believe that that church guided by the Holy Spirit, somehow the Holy Spirit guided the church 
into error? That's heretical. But every Protestant has to believe that because the church of the first 1500 years did not teach any of the Protestant doctrines of sola fide, of sola scriptura, of Calvinism. They did not teach that. The, the church of the first 1500 years was entirely different. It had a strong emphasis on iconography, on veneration, on monasticism. Have you heard of a Protestant monastery? All of these things are completely lost in the Reformation. The Bible says that, yeah, there will be false teachers, but the false teachers the Bible is referring to are the people like the Mormons and the Jehovah's Witnesses, not the, the mainstream church. The mainstream church is the Orthodox Church. It is the pillar and foundation of truth. Those false teachers did come. It was the Jehovah's Witnesses. It was the Mormons, but it was also the Protestant Reformers. It was John Calvin. It was Martin Luther. It was Zwingli. They are the false teachers too. He's just arbitrarily drawing the line again. Who's his authority? He gets to say, oh, those, you know, these, you know, the Reformers were fine, but the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons, they're not. No, they're all wrong. They're all false teachers. All you ever need is this book, Rock and Sand. It goes over each individual reformer and their heirs. The difference between an Orthodox and a Protestant, we both believe that the Catholic Church teaches heir that they have defected, but the Protestants came from the Catholic Church. That is their lineage. But if we can go back in history, we know the Catholic Church is heirs. Well, we go back to the Great Schism when East and West split in 1054. Who caused that? Who added un something unbiblical to the creed that they had no authority to do? It was the West. Who claimed that their bishop had universal jurisdiction and used forgeries to prop that up? It was the West. So the West was on the wrong side of the Great Schism. So why are we continuing down that path when we could just be Orthodox? Because we can see the entire way that Western theology went is wrong. The filioque is wrong. The absolute divine simplicity is wrong. Eastern theology is completely different. It's mystical. We have theosis. The essence energies distinction. Just go into an Orthodox church for yourself and see the beautiful iconography. Why is that not emphasized in, in, the, in the West? All of this is completely forgotten. Now we can watch the video. The Eastern Orthodox Church is the most conservative form of Christianity by far. Is that a good thing? Well, today I'm going to be talking about Eastern Orthodoxy and why it's really the most conservative form of Christianity and why there are some good uh, things that come from that, but why I'm still not Eastern Orthodox because um, there are some problems and some of the problems stem from that fact. It's false. So what do I mean by the most conservative? So a lot, a lot of times when we think of conservative Christians, we think of, you know, like Baptist evangelicals. And in, in some sense, they're conservative. Like politically, they're the most likely to vote Republican. And um, they are very conservative on certain social issues. But in a more deeper theological sense, they're really not conservative at all because they're not traditional. Um, Baptists in their theology are the opposite of traditional. They think that uh, we need to sort of depart from tradition and just say whatever we personally think the Bible says, even if it goes against all tradition. So in, in a Baptist view, in a modern evangelical view, if you are fully convinced the Bible teaches something, that's what you should believe, even if it goes against church tradition. Now, the orthodoxy is at the complete opposite end of that spectrum, um, thinking that whatever the tradition is, that's what you should believe. Even if you think the Bible says something different, then you're just wrong. You're misinterpreting it because the church is a divine institution and is always right about the Bible. Um, that's, that's the orthodox view, and then there are a bunch of different views in between, so... As orthodox Christians, we read the Bible, we read the saints, we refer to holy tradition, we see what the church is teaching, we listen to our bishop and our priest, authority is so important. How do you know that you're interpreting the Bible correctly? You need to look how it's always been interpreted. Patristic consensus, these are very important, there's no reason to reinvent the wheel. We think of churches that follow tradition and even sometimes put tradition above the Bible. We normally think of Catholicism, but Orthodoxy does that even more than Catholicism. Catholicism sees kind of scripture and the church as on equal grounds, but um, Orthodoxy sees like the church, like the, Bible, the authority of the Bible is basically subject to the authority of the church. Um, so everything Protestants don't like about Catholicism, for the most part, there are some exceptions like, you know, purgatory and stuff, but most of the things Protestants don't like about Catholicism is, like, even more extreme in Eastern Orthodoxy. Like, compared to Eastern Orthodoxy, Roman Catholicism is kind of Protestant. They don't follow tradition 
quite as strictly as the Eastern Orthodox do. They, they still follow it pretty strictly. Of course, they follow it more strictly than Protestants. And within Protestantism, there are more traditional Protestants, and there are less traditional Protestants. Baptists fall under the less traditional Protestants. Um, Presbyterians like me and like um, Lutherans and Anglicans follow under the more traditional Protestants. I know there are some modern Presbyterians who act like less traditional, but I would personally just say they're not being consistent with uh, classical Presbyterian teaching. Um, and of course, Protestantism has um, every Protestant branch has like a a wing that's like radically progressive that. Uh, progresses way beyond any Christianity at all, both theologically and um, socially progressive, but we're not really talking about those in this video. And what does it mean that they're that they're really conservative? So I we, we've established that they always follow tradition. So how, like, I can, even those of you who are like, when I, those of you who are, would identify as conservative, when I said Eastern Orthodoxy is super conservative, you're probably like, oh good, that's great, but then when I said it means they always follow tradition no matter what, you're like, yeah, I can see why that can be a problem because sometimes the traditional view on something isn't necessarily the biblical view. Presbyterians really have a, have a balance of, a, ba a balanced view of tradition, I think. Like, we're not like the Baptists because we think tradition matters and it is authoritative in some sense, but we're not Catholic or Orthodox because we don't um, put tradition on equal grounds with Wrong. scripture. Well, we do believe in sola scriptura. But Sola Scriptura was never intended to mean we only use the Bible and nothing else. It means the Bibles are only, like, infallible authority. It's our only ultimate authority. Church tradition is, and church, like, history, church councils, those are still uh, lower authorities. Um, lower authorities in the Bible that we still need to, like, learn from and stuff. So, Eastern Orthodoxy will won't even consider like is this biblical if it's a traditional thing so it's not, it's not that they don't read the bible and learn from it they always do but they never question if any of their views are biblical i don't know where he's getting this because every orthodox person i've come across will defend their beliefs biblically of why prayer for the saints is biblical why icon veneration is biblical I was actually impressed when I was a Catholic looking into Orthodoxy that the Orthodox, they knew their Bible and they, all, they also knew their tradition. The Protestants know their Bible, but they don't really care that much about tradition. The Catholics only focus on tradition and don't really care about the Bible, oh, just whatever the Pope says. But I was very impressed with how well the Orthodox know their Bible, so I don't know where he's getting this from. Split between Orthodoxy and Catholicism, and this is an example of how Catholics are a bit less radically traditional than the Eastern Orthodox. So, um, you may know of this filioque controversy. Um, that's the difference between, that's something the Eastern Orthodox disagree with all Western Christians on. And by Western Christians, I mean Catholics and all Protestants, like Anglicans, Lutherans, Presbyterians, Baptists, Methodists. It's basically Orthodox against everyone else. So what is the filioque? So the Nicene Creed, um, our version of the Nicene Creed, the Western version says, I believe in the Holy Spirit who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Their version, this is the only way in which the, the versions of the Nicene Creed are different, everything else is exactly the same. Their version of the Nicene Creed says, I believe in the Holy Spirit who proceeds from the Father. And they don't have the and the Son part. And the Son, in Latin, is just one word, filioque. And that's why there's a controversy of should that word be there. Now, the Orthodox will always point out that wasn't originally there. And they're right. Um, in the original version of the Nicene Creed, the filioque wasn't there, and it was added later. The reason we added it um, is because it's biblical. Wrong. All the same reasons that we have biblically for saying the Spirit proceeds from the Father, for example, the Bible calls the Holy Spirit the Spirit of the Father, those same exact reasons can be applied to the Son as well, because the Holy Spirit is also called the Spirit of Christ. So, um, that's why the filioque was added, because there were, like, very, very strong biblical arguments for saying the Holy Spirit proceeds from the from the Son as well as the Father. Seems like he doesn't really understand the history of the Filioque, why it was added, and when it was added in Rome. Because it started in a local Spanish council to combat the Arian crisis. It wasn't really a big thing in the West. Until about, you know, 400, 500 years later, when the Frankish subversion of, of Rome, they really pushed Rome to adding the filioque to the creed. It was added for geopolitical reasons. The bishop of Rome resisted the influence to add the filioque for so long. Because you have to think, 
They did not tamper with the creed unless it was in ecumenical council. That's why I had those previous slides that it forbade and anathematized any additions or changes to the creed because all of the new additions to the creed had been done via council. But because of the subversion of the Catholic Church, they added and forced this part of the creed. And so when the Greeks came together and they saw this, they're like, well, th this is an orthodox. And then the Catholics, the, the West, accused the Greeks of changing the creed, of removing the filioque. It's just absolutely bananas. And we could see that the filioque is, is not biblical. We can see that the model of Trinity that was ratified at the Second Ecumenical Council, the Cappadocian model, which everyone accepts, all the Protestants, all the Catholics, all the Orthodox accept that model of the Trinity. Well, they taught the monarchy of the Father, which excludes the filioque, which means that the West is wrong, including Protestants and Catholics. You can read about how the pillars of orthodoxy stood against the filioque. And what is so ironic is that the Eastern Catholics venerate the people who are against the filioque. Eastern Catholics, they don't recite the filioque. It makes no sense because the filioque itself is wrong. The Eastern North, that, that was what the Western Church, keep in mind, the Catholic Church was saying, um, this is biblical, so we need to add it. The Eastern Church was like, well, no, it's it's not in the creed, so we shouldn't change the creed. And the Catholic Church was like, but it's biblical. Ooh. And then the Orthodox Church was like, but it's not in the creed. And at this point, they were still sort of the same church, the same organization, but that this was, most Orthodox people I've talked to have said this was the biggest reason for the, the Great Schism in 1054 between East and West. Even though there were other issues, they would say this is, like, the big one, the, the, the like, defining issue That was there. the first example. So if you, you'll notice the Western Church, which is now, like, sort of the Roman Catholic Church, even though the Western Church back then wasn't identical to the Roman Catholic Church, it's it sort of evolved into what we now have as the Roman Catholic Church, they were acting like the Protestants in that debate. They were saying, we need to do this because it's biblical, and the um, Eastern Orthodox were like, no, it's not in the creed. Now, they raise a, they raise a good point. If we say that the Nicene Creed is inerrant, I, I do believe the Nicene Creed is inerrant, then why change it? So, the original version of the Nicene Creed wasn't wrong. It's not wrong to say the Spirit proceeds from the Father. Now, if it had said the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and not the Son, then I would think that would be wrong. The first but it just ecumenical church council was the Council of Nicaea. But the second one was the, and the Council of Nicaea um, wrote the Nicene Creed, but the second one was the Council of Constantinople. And they added the paragraph of the Nicene Creed. So to sum up the filioque, it's not like the Orthodox were saying, no, 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 you can't change anything. It's just that the West was randomly changing the creed without a council. He brings up the fact that every time before, the creed was changed with a council. But magically, he just says, oh, they just added it because it was biblical. Why does he leave out all of the context? And he's talking about the ecumenical councils. He's talking about the normative authority of the church, which is pretty much non-existent in Protestantism. Well, why aren't you a part of that historic church that never defected? which is the Orthodox Church. Orthodoxy is always faithful to tra tradition, so that's a problem Protestants have. It's never a problem that the Eastern Orthodox have. Their problem is that of all the... Like, this is the main reason I'm not Eastern Orthodox. Of all the forms of Christianity, the Eastern Orthodox Church has had the least of a positive impact on the world. But this is what I was talking about at the beginning of the video. This is the main reason he's not Eastern Orthodox. This is not an argument. It has literally nothing to do with the true or falsity of Orthodoxy. Throughout this entire video, I've showed how Protestantism, how Catholicism are false, and this is his argument. This is the same argument that atheists make. Well, religion has done so much harm, it's held back, it stopped us, it kept us in the Dark Ages. I mean, what type of argument is this? The Western Catholic Church basically invented Western civilization. Basically everything we appreciate about Western civilization, you know, like modern hospitals, universities, um, just even the Western family structure, like um, so much that we just think of as a normal part of our society came from the Western Catholic Church and I guess this is the fall of the American education system but all those things hospitals universities all they weren't unique to what you would call Western Christendom actually a lot of those existed in the East too 
in the Eastern Roman Empire. Catholicism and later Protestantism. I, I'd say Protestantism did this even to an even greater extent. Um, had a really profound effect on the um, countries economically, socially, and culturally, and ca caused them all to advance. You could really take any country in Europe. I know Europe's mostly atheist now, but every country in Europe, for the most part, is historically Protestant, Catholic, or Orthodox. So the countries in Europe that are doing the best economically, like t Sweden, um, Denmark, the Netherlands, those are the ones that were historically Protestant. Um, Protestantism helped even more than Catholicism. You know, this whole, like, Protestant work ethic really emphasized, you know, individual hard work and i feel like this is a huge oversimplification of why those countries are rich they're rich because of protestantism actually there's lots of other reasons you could look to you know colonial empires scandinavia is incredibly rich because of their oil reserves again you can't boil it down to one issue and i think if you're making an argument for truth for where the true church is it should be timeless and the wealth that we see in these nations is not going to be forever I don't know, I don't even know if this argument will be relevant in 50 years, in 100 years, in 1,000 years. And to boil down, you're not, you're going to reject Eastern Orthodoxy because of these reasons right now. The conservatism of Eastern Orthodoxy has had both positive and negative effects on those countries. So I would say because they were so stuck in tradition, they never really made big societal developments, and that's why Eastern European countries are not quite as economically advanced as Western European countries. Like, it's gotta be a joke. This is not how you pick your church. This is some flawed historical analysis to boil everything, the complexities of Europe, down to Orthodox are, are poor because they're too theologically conservative. It, it, is that even the point of Christianity? Even take two countries that are basically identical except one's Catholic and one's Orthodox. Take, I don't know, Poland versus Russia, or another example is um, Serbia versus Croatia. Croatia's Catholic, Serbia's Orthodox. Other than that, they're almost identical, but Croatia's doing so much better. And then he throws Serbia under the bus. That was so unnecessary. Croatia is better because they're Western versus Serbia. They're too traditional, too, too conservative. They're too Orthodox, and that's why they're not doing as well. It's not like it's way more complicated than that, that Serbia was occupied by Muslims for hundreds of years and made so many saints. It's not that. Protestantism for like Northern Europe was basically too good for its own good. It helped basically it helped society too much. It helped society so much that it, society got really wealthy and prosperous. And as a result, the people got kind of spoiled and irreligious. Whereas orthodoxy, um, the commitment to tradition helped people um, stay religious, which is a good thing. We, we want people to be religious, and the most religious countries in Europe are the orthodox countries. That's the important part, is that you have the faith. Everything in this world that is, pa is passing, material prosperity, that's going to go away. Nothing in this life is forever except your faith. And he's trying to diagnose and oversimplify all, of, all, all Europe. It can be solved by the Protestant countries. They did better because they were Protestant. I think a big factor of that is geography. They, the, the Orthodox countries were all landlocked. They didn't have the ability to have these huge empires trading. It, no wonder the UK is one of the, the richest countries. The US, it's all about geography. Geography is so important in, in developing the, the wealth of nations. The Orthodox Church is that um, it can be very nationalistic, and the Orthodox Church is always very divided because there's like- These have been the most superficial reasons for rejecting Orthodoxy. Yes, we have the true teaching. Yes, we have the divine liturgy. Yes, we have always made amazing saints. Yes, we are the church that never defected, that is one holy, universal, and apostolic. But we're going to ignore all these because of these very surface level things. It just, that's not the route to go. And I hope he watches this video. Seems like a nice guy, but it sounds like he hasn't actually researched into orthodoxy. Please, if, you, if you're watching this, do watch my other videos. There are so many great orthodox content creators showing the flaws in Protestantism, in Catholicism. Go visit an orthodox church. Thank you. God bless.